How's everybody? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming today. I appreciate it very much, and uh, I'm just delighted to be here. How many of you have never seen me before? This is your first time. Wow, everybody. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm famous, but I guess, you know, that settles that. Anyway, nice to see you. I've got some interesting ideas to share with you. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. And if you'll take some good notes, I've got some lists for you to make that you can take home with you and ponder at later times some of the things I want to share with you. I was raised in southwest Idaho. My parents gave me an incredibly excellent start in my life, which I appreciated very much. But I quit school at age 19, unfortunately. My reasoning was, I'm smart enough to get a job. How much smarter do you need to be? And with that shallow thinking, I quit school, age 19, and got a job, went to work. A little while later, got married, started a little family. And I'm struggling and, you know, trying to do my best. But it seems like each year I'm falling just a little bit further behind. Finally, age 25, the climax of my sort of you know, weariness with where I was, not doing as well as I thought I should, I hear a knock on my door, and I happen to be home alone. When I opened the door, there was a little Girl Scout, about this tall, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me the finest sales presentation I've ever heard, Girl Scouts around the world, no better organization, and we've got these cookies, only $2, several flavors, and with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. No problem. I wanted to buy. Big problem. I haven't got $2 in my pocket. Now, I'm a grown man. I live in America. I've been to one year of college. I'm married. I've got a family. And I don't have $2 in my pocket. And I didn't want to tell her that. So I did what I thought was next best. I lied to her. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I've still got plenty in the house that we haven't eaten yet. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And she leaves. When she leaves, I say to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I mean, how low can you get lying to a Girl Scout? I mean, <laughs> that's about as low as you can go. But I promised myself that day I was going to start my search of finding opportunity, finding somebody who could teach me and coach me on doing much better for myself and for my family and for my future. And shortly after that, I met a most extraordinary man, very wealthy. But um, a friend of mine said, you've got to meet this man. He's rich, but he's easy to talk to. He's got a unique philosophy of business and life. And the more he told me about this man, the more I said, I've got to meet this guy. And shortly after that, I had a chance to meet him. Sure enough, uh, when I met him, I was impressed. Obviously, he was rich. But he was friendly and easy to talk to. And I said to myself, if I could just get around someone like him, and if he would coach me, I would be willing to learn anything. I'd love to be like him. Well, my good fortune was he invited me to join his company, and over the next five years, my dream came true. He coached me and taught me how to turn my life from pennies to fortune, and he's not alive anymore, but uh, I'd like to pay tribute to him one more time, Mr. Earl Schof, for the dramatic impact he had on my life, especially during that five-year period. And so my whole life turned around, I made my fortune by the time I was 32, starting at age 25. And uh, some of the ideas that I want to share with you today came from that five-year experience. Then from there, I got into lecturing and giving seminars, and I've written a few books. And uh, my career now spans about 41 years. But I'll never forget the impact this gentleman had on my life with a few simple concepts that totally changed my life, changed my future, and changed everything.
Let me give you the day that turns your life around as quickly as I can. I got four parts to the day that turns your life around, and then we're finished for the day. Number one, disgust. Disgust. Disgust is a negative emotion, but it can have a very positive, powerful effect. Disgust says, I've had it. What an important day that could be. I've had it. I met a beautiful, powerful, accomplished executive lady in New York. The company invited me to come in. This lady was a vice president, extraordinary lady. I got to know her and I found out her story. I said, how did you get here? Big income. And she never went to high school, never went to college, never went to university. I said, how did you get here? Executive, powerful, income. She said, well, let me tell you part of the scenario. She said, when I was a young mother a few years ago, she said, one day I asked my husband for $10. And he said, what for? She said, before that day was over, I decided I would never, ever ask. Again. She said, I started studying opportunity, found it, took the classes, put myself through the schools, did the scenario. Now I'm vice president. I make a lot of money. And she said, I kept my promise. I've never, ever had to ask again. It's called a life changing day. The day you say enough is enough. Now, if you can add an act to your disgust, it helps. A man takes a shotgun to his car, blows out every window, destroys every tire, puts 100 rounds in it and says, I've driven this embarrassing thing for the last time. <laughs> and then he saves it. He saves it. And later when somebody says, how did you become rich and powerful? He says, let me show you this car. One day I'd had it up to here, I blew it to smithereens. <laughs> enough is enough. Powerful. Here's the last three. Next is decision. Decision making is a life changing day. If you went home today and in the next few days cleaned up a list of decisions, it could furnish enough inspiration for the next five years, ten years. What an inspiring day, the day you can bring yourself to decide. And here's the third one, desire, wanting too bad enough. Who knows the mystery of that? We don't know. But here's something I do know. Sometimes desire waits for a trigger, waits for something to happen. Who knows what the happening may be? A song, the lyrics, a movie, the dialogue, a seminar, a sermon, a book, an experience, confrontation with an enemy, a conversation with a friend who finally levels with you. Whatever the experience it is, it's so valuable. And here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Don't put up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness. Take down the walls. Go for the experience. Let it teach you. And here's the last one. Resolve. Resolve says, I will, two of the most powerful words in the language. Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. Best definition of resolve I got from a little junior high girl, Foster City, California. I'm going through some words one day. I got to this one and I asked the kids, who can tell me what resolve means? Some didn't know, some tried. Interesting. The last one was the best. Little girl about three rows back, she said, I think I know Mr. Owen. I said, what? She said, I think resolve means promising yourself you will never give up. I said, that's the best I've ever heard. She's probably giving seminars somewhere today, right? I mean, that's the <laughs> best I've heard. I asked the kids, how long should a baby try to learn how to walk? 
How long would you give your average baby? Before you say, hey, enough, enough, no. Any mother in the world would say, you're crazy. My baby is going to keep trying what? Until, what a magic word. I want you to write it down. Until, promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. You'll go to seminars until you get a handle on it. You'll listen to it until it makes sense. You'll go for it until you understand it. You'll practice it until you develop the skill. Never give up until, however long that is. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book, word by word, apple by apple. Walk around the block, walk around the block. Go for it. Don't miss the chance to grow and resolve that you'll pay the price until you learn, change, grow, become. Then you'll discover some of life's best treasures when you pay that 